we're so naturally gifted with the tools of open intelligence, with the, the capacity of open intelligence. And when we were repeatedly familiarized with a closed intelligence or you know, the term reified intelligence, which I was not familiar with the term reified prior to balanced view. And so that was really helpful to have a general term, but to also recognize that it's uh, anything that has been uh, abstract, taken to be substantial or real in and of itself. So believing that anyone or anything has a self-generated separate identity. That's a reified or closed intelligence. I mean, believing that we're in a skin line separate from one another and that we continually take in information and keep it inside this skin line to be able to make decisions. And so we, we simply get uh, exposed to this kind of, of education this subject-object orientation, this idea or belief that we're separate entities. And yet now we are in this glorious time of, of uh, scientific instrumentation in which we have proven scientifically that it is impossible for there to be any break or division anywhere, that everything is a seamless expanse of indivisibility. And, of course, the, the, the vibrancy of reality is evident as well. You know, the shimmering that you see right now and that you hear right now is the vibrancy and, and, and uh, aliveness of reality. And so it's totally apparent. But what has gone unacknowledged or unnoticed or ignored is our stable, totally indestructible open intelligence nature. And so repeatedly, again and again, we're asked to stop thinking just for a moment. And acknowledge the spacious, open alertness that's always on, always on. So previous to an education in open intelligence, most of us were attempting to find security, trying to find security in uh, people, places, or things. And trying to, let's say, uh, if you imagine the uh, grand scheme of a human life, there's the, the birth and then the education process, and in that, and, and death, right? So we, we see these different landmarks, but where did it all begin and end? We've never really asked ourselves this. And now we're opening up to, well, what's here right now and always here right now, no matter what the circumstance. So then we don't try to find security in a home, a house, apartment. We don't try to find security in a car. We don't try to find security in our parents. We don't try to find security in a partner. We don't try to find security in a child or in money or things because it's so clear that this is not a guaranteed security. It's never guaranteed. So this, this scampering around hoping to get or get rid of one of these people, places, or things to try to find security is what conventional life has been about without us even knowing we were scampering around simply adopting this education that we were uh, immersed in. And then we're open enough to then say, wow, there's another choice. You mean I can, I'm guaranteed security right here, right now in the very nature of my mind? I was never educated in that from, you know, day one. So now we are, and we have the opportunity to acknowledge a short moment. When we say, well, stop thinking for a moment, again, it's not to repeat that over and over and over again. 
It's just a tool initially to acknowledge the indivisibility of open intelligence, alert, spacious openness, and its dynamic display. Every experience exactly as it is. And so then we can enjoy the security, the stability that is pervading every single circumstance no matter what. Guaranteed. I was never given an education where there was a guarantee before. But I had to investigate for myself. So this is the opportunity we all have. Short moments, whenever we remember, open intelligence and its dynamic display.